Hello everyone, I'm Nurse Scorpio and welcome back to the Dream Machine. We're finally jumping in. The final chapter is here. It's time to complete. Whoops. Victor Neff's story. The Sleeping Machine presents the Dream Machine, Chapter Six. A rule. A game by Anders Gustafsson. And Eric Zering. It's been too long since I did. Mr. Neff's voice. This isn't what I was expecting. Something must have gone wrong. Are the helmets glitchy? That's just what I need. Another problem to fix. Examine boxes. Moving in seems like a distant memory. I need to turn this down a bit. Who the hell could that be? Like my guitar now. I once dreamt of becoming a musician, but that seems very remote right now. Is the stuff still in the box here? Is Elo and Milo? Elo and Milo are there? They're still here? They're very much buried under books and shit. I'll get the door in a minute. Camera's still set up exactly the same way. I've got nothing in my inventory now. The bed's all a mess. So this does appear to be set up exactly the same way that it was. How would my... Because I'm assuming this is actually... Unless it's me in the dream again. It could be me in the dream again. For those who, I mean, it's been several months. In the fact that it, no, it's actually been over a year. <laughs> Shut up. I know. It's empty. Looks like the fridge is empty too. It's been a year. The last thing we did was we put the helmet on our pregnant wife's um, stomach so that we could enter the baby's mind, which is at the center of this dream world that the dream machine is trying to take over. Hello again, Mr. Neff. You finally awake. Uh, Mr. Morton. I imagine you must be pretty confused right now. I don't remember what his voice was. Don't worry, it'll pass. Considering he died in the first chapter more than a year ago. <laughs> Where's Alicia? She's recovering down in my office. I made her some chamomile tea to soothe her nerves. She was pretty upset when I got here. She'd just woken up. With you next to her, totally unresponsive, wearing one of the helmets. It must have freaked the poor girl out. What happened to you? I'm still not quite sure. After we said goodbye, I felt my consciousness leaving my body. I could see you below me as I drifted up into the air. The higher I rose, the more insignificant everything below me seemed. You, the machine, this house, 
After a while, I forgot it ever existed. I was just a tiny part of a ceaseless void. I don't know how long I drifted like that. It felt like weeks. But after a while, I felt something tugging at my leg. Pulling me backwards. The world of shape and form. I tried to fight it. But the harder I fought, the stronger it pulled. That's when I woke up on the floor in the basement. What about the machine? I managed to turn it off. That's why you couldn't get back to the dreamscape. The machine has finally been shut down. I call bullshit. How did you manage that? I remembered my grandfather talking about a kill switch. He feared something like this might happen, the paranoid old coot. Turns out he was right. Once I found the kill switch, turning the machine off was easy. I wish you'd remembered that sooner. It would have saved me a lot of trouble. Me too. My voice is beginning to slip. How long have I been out? For about half an hour or so. But we shouldn't leave Alicia alone for too long. She's probably dying to see you. Why don't we go down and join her? We have lots to discuss. I don't trust this man because he's not Mr. Morton. Couldn't even wait for me. He is sleeping. How do you know that? Edie? Not sleeping in here. She's not here at all. It's not that she's sleeping. She's non-existent. Look at the clues, Mr. Morton. God, could you imagine if she'd been sleeping in the bathroom? <laughs> oh, God! Why? Have I seen this closet door? Oh, it's locked. Let's see if the people on the top floor are, uh... Also... Missing. Oh! Mr. Willard's here. Mr. Willard has been knocked out by the sleeping powder. He should come around now that his dream has been purged. Does so that mean she's also... Yep. Huh. Well, Edie wasn't in her apartment, so can you blame me? It's very concerning. Here's the real test, I suppose. Is there still a chair and a man sitting in the lobby? Aha! The man has left, but my sofa's still here. The sofa's still blocking the entrance. I can't leave this place until it's gone. Don't worry, Mr. Neff. The letterbox is for the estate. I don't need anything from them. I knew it! You're not real.
Mr. Morton's not here anymore either. Alicia! God, I love this music! Wait. What was her voice? Pause. I can't pause. No, I just have a little part. It was, it was, um... Celebrate the end of the inf of your infernal meddling. What? Seriously? Whoa! I'm falling into the abyss. Shit! What the? What just happened? Was that the machine taking the shape of Alicia? Yes. Did I just fall for the same trick twice? Either way you slice it, this does not look good. Don't worry, eventually we have to stop falling. I don't know what I thought an unborn child's dream would look like, but this certainly isn't it. This place stretches endlessly to the left of me. Am I just gonna fall like this forever? Whoa. The good news is, I actually managed to enter my child's dream. The bad news is, I'm either falling into an endless void, or I'm about to hit the bottom of this place really hard. I don't know which one I'd prefer. The upside, things can't get much worse than this. Things can always get much worse. Oh god, it's the void talking to us again. 